Welcome to FOSS North, the virtual edition. We would like to thank all our sponsors and partners in this difficult situation. Our gold sponsors, Luxoft and Ansible by Red Hat. Our silver sponsors, ITRS Group and Make It Right. Our base sponsors. Our partner projects, the open source community and the region of Gothenburg. And a huge thanks to our awesome community. This would not have been possible without you. <laughs> there we go. Um, so uh, this talk is going to be about some advice for people who suddenly find themselves working from home perhaps not voluntarily. Uh, it's not exactly the working remotely talk I would have given three months ago, um, but with the current circumstances, I thought maybe this could be helpful. Uh, I've been working from home for seven years now, uh, more or less. And I don't know if I would call myself an expert, uh, but at least maybe I can tell you about some of the pitfalls I've failed to avoid. Um, so first of all, don't panic. Uh, working from home can be frustrating, uh, but it can also be fantastic. Uh, and how you and your team approach it makes a huge difference. Hopefully this advice can make your remote life a little bit easier. Uh, some of this advice is aimed in particular at managers who may find themselves at a loss as how to manage people who aren't in the same place as them. And most of it is actually about someone working in a team and how you will work uh, and make things work uh, in the team. Before I start, I also want to mention what this talk isn't about. Um, I'm not going to give you a list of tools to use. Personally, I think it's possible to work remotely without relying on any particular tool. And I, I don't think there's anything that I could say that's really critical. Um, in fact, I think some of the tools that are commonly used can be a bit de detrimental to having a good remote working experience. But I'll get more into that later. Okay, so tip number one, get dressed. Start each day by getting up and getting dressed. Uh, this maybe sounds silly, but if you ever work remotely before, I think you know what I mean. It's way too easy to end up staying in bed all day, staring into a laptop. To avoid this and a host of other potentially awkward situations, make sure to get dressed as if you were actually going to work. Once you've graduated to master level remote worker, you can start doing the bathrobe and slippers thing, but I wouldn't recommend starting there. Tip number two, commute. Start each day by taking a walk. In case you're quarantined, do some stretches or meditate or exercise, but get your blood pumping and make sure that your body is awake before you start working. Tip number three, eat breakfast. Don't start skipping meals or living on snacks and candy. Since you're not having to commute or go out for lunch, make this an opportunity to cook proper meals. Make a meal plan, make food, and above all, Take the chance to get away from the computer when eating. Number four, plan your day. Sitting at home with lots to do and no one to talk to you can be overwhelming. One trick that has worked wonders for me is to start each day by writing down a to-do list for the day. Just a simple list of things I want to need to do that day. Each day, a new list. This really helps to calm you down and focus. Number five, take breaks. Set a timer, get up and stretch. Again, take walks or exercise. I think you can start to see the theme here. The tricky part about working from home is that the breaks then happen organically when you're in an office, you now have to make happen yourself. Take a full lunch break, take a double lunch break and go for a walk and get some sun while you have the chance. Make rituals. Build habits. When having a coffee, take a break away from the computer. 
Don't end up drinking 15 cups of coffee while hammering away at the keyboard, ending up with an ulcer. I bought a French press and started grinding my own beans just to make the process a bit slower and to give me some time away from the computer. I'm calling this make rituals because I think we're undervaluing the benefit of patterns to help us building good habits. Number seven, time to com connect. Working from home can make you invisible to others and it can make you feel invisible. It can be a lonely experience, but it doesn't have to be. Make sure to check in with your teammates regularly and schedule one-to-one -one meetings or chats. Not too many, you don't wanna waste your time or their time, but make sure to spend some time each day exchanging small talk with someone on your team. A dedicated space. If you can, make sure that you can close the door to your office and shut out any other people who might be at home with you. If you can't, have a discussion with those who share your home about respecting each other's space. Use headphones and curtains, whatever tools you have available, this isn't always doable, but think about what you can do to separate your home office from your life outside of work. But accept the distractions. If you are sharing your home, there will be distractions. Just accept this, don't stress out. So you won't be 100% productive. Look, you weren't that productive at the office either, but the interruptions just felt like work because you're at work. Take a break, play with the kids, it's okay. Working from home also means not having to adhere strictly to office hours. Maybe nine to five just doesn't work when the kids aren't at school and you're sharing your home office. Maybe working a few hours in the morning and a few hours in the evening would make more sense. Remote work allows you to experiment with fitting your work schedule to your life instead of fitting your life around work. Think asynchronous. It's tempting to become overly reliant on team meetings when working from home. At first, this seems like a great idea, but it can quickly get stressful. Allow your colleagues to go off the radar to actually get work done and do the same. This, I think, is the biggest difference between working in an office and working remotely. If your colleagues are spread across the planet and time zones, it becomes even more crucial. At first, it's easy to feel guilty about not being in a meeting. What if everyone else thinks I'm slacking off? I mean, what if I am slacking off? For managers, letting go can be a challenge. What if everyone is slacking off? Trust me, this isn't as much of a problem as it may seem at first. After a while, you realize that it's actually just as easy to slack off in an office if that's what you want to do. Really, no meetings. Video conferencing really isn't that great. It's not the same as a real meeting and it eats up a lot of time and energy. One of the great benefits of working remotely is being able to control your own schedule. Embrace that. Having a focused meeting to work out a particular issue is fine, but daily standards, for example, I don't recommend it. Now, this point in particular is one that I think is gonna be difficult for people used to working in an office to accept. Managers love meetings. Scrum is all about meetings. How can meetings be something neg negative? It seems to me like everyone's first instinct when starting to work remotely is to reach for a video conferencing solution and schedule as much meeting time as possible in a desperate attempt to make remote work seem just like being in an office. This is a bad idea. It's gonna stress everyone out. I'm not saying you can't have meetings at all, but consider other possible solutions. Make sure everyone is heard. All right, sometimes you do need to do a conference call. In virtual meetings, it's easy for some people to disappear and just sit quietly. Due to delays and latencies, interrupting each other is either happening nonstop or no one dares to speak because everyone else uh, is afraid of interrupting. Therefore, every meeting should have a moderator who makes sure everyone gets to speak. This takes some practice. To be honest, online meetings just aren't great. It's better to try to avoid them. No naked pings. A naked ping is when you come back to your chat client after being out for lunch and you see one of your colleagues who left you a message. The message is, are you there? Or, hi. Now this is basic chat hygiene, but it comes a lot more important when working from home. If you wanna ask your colleague a question, don't just say hello, don't say ping, don't say, are you there? Just ask the question. 
they will answer when they see it. Again, embrace the asynchronous nature of remote work. Over-communicate. Let your colleagues know what you're doing and make sure you know what they're doing. Check in and check out. Make sure to notify them if you take a break and when you sign off for the day. Keep connected, but without requiring everyone to be in sync. And finally, stop working. When I started working from home, the comment I got most often was, oh, I couldn't do that. I'd just end up playing video games all day or I wouldn't get anything done, something like that. In my experience, the opposite is true. When working from home, the boundary between working time and personal time gets blurry. Make sure you stop working in the evening. Don't fall into the trap of working nonstop. Turn off your work computer and step away from your desk. And that's it. <laughs> OK, so I have a question. This is Henrik, so thanks for right. now. The, uh, a question here. When it comes to meetings, we have a rule in my team to do stand-ups in a dedicated chat. Async is important when working from home. Do you agree? It can be. So my experience is with a remote team where everyone is in a different time zone. And that makes having a stand-up every day especially challenging. Uh, but it's also the case, so right now it's kind of a special time for working remotely where everyone is kind of at home instead of traveling. But if you're working remotely other times, people would be traveling perhaps or in different locations and having everyone ready to sit down for a meeting at exactly the same time becomes a challenge. So personally, I found, find that the daily stand-up becomes less valuable when working remotely. Um, but again, right now is kind of a special difficult situation. Thank you. So we're getting the screen set up for the next speaker. Um, I, I can tell the, the speakers that we get applauses and so on in the, in the comments on YouTube, which you unfortunately cannot see live, but you have to go in there and, and, and get an ego trip. Um, I see we have more questions up. Do you want to do them, Henrik? Questions slash tips. Okay, sorry, I had a miss here. So should you use the phone if you quickly need questions answered or oh, um, what would be the equivalent to walk into to their desk? Yeah, I think using the phone or just um, a video conference call or uh, a call over the internet between two people can be very valuable where you can have a direct conversation face to face, so to speak. Um, of course, I think it's valuable to try to limit that because if you need your question answered, you need to interrupt what someone else is doing and maybe they're not ready to handle that at the moment. So I think this is not that different from the office. It can be very frustrating if you are the one person that everyone needs to ask questions and you constantly get people coming in and knocking on your door to your office. So just use your common sense. But yes, I think if you're gonna have meetings, having these focused one-to-one -one meetings is absolutely the best thing. <laughs> 